Hello, I'm Thracius Appetite. I've recently been putting in a ton of work expanding my patch bank for the Arturia Microfreak. Uh, and while I've been working on that, I saw a question somewhere asking how you do an electric piano on the Microfreak. I recently did a video on how to do like a Wurlitzer style uh, electric piano on a polyphonic analog synthesizer. This is a different situation. We've got only periphery and uh, the digital oscillators are quite a bit different than you'd be working with on an analog synthesizer, but it also opens up uh, other possibilities. So in this video I'm going to demonstrate some techniques we can employ to get various flavors of electric piano out of this thing. Um, the Microfreak's limitations force some fairly major compromises, uh, so I'll go over what our options are to work around those. But first, let's hear a sample of what kinds of electric piano sounds we can get out of this. So here's like a Wurlitzer style electric piano based on a square wave. So here's like a, a DX7 style FM electric piano. So this style of electric piano is very popular in the 80s. Or a slightly less metallic variation. Here's another FM piano. And this one uses the Harmo oscillator type. All right, so I've pulled up an init patch here, and let's dive in and start creating an electric piano sound. So there's some things that are going to be universal to a, like a piano sound. Is uh, we're going to want more than one note at once, so we'll turn on the periphery, um, velocity sensitivity, which we have to go into the utility menu preset, and then find velo amp mod. Now uh, we've got some velocity sensitivity. Um, and for press mode, I'm going to turn that to velocity so that we can modulate something with velocity instead of aftertouch. I like to increase the preset volume uh, after doing the amp mod because that kind of cuts down the volume a bit. All right, so the next thing to think about is the timbre, and that's going to vary a lot kind of depending on the flavor of electric piano. But let's start with like the Wurlitzer style, which we'll get by, you know, turn morph to zero on the basic waves. Um, that'll give you a square wave. You turn up the, the sim, that just gives you a little pulse width. And that kind of gives you the, the crunchy um, timbre. And then you want to turn down the, uh, the cutoff on the filter. So that starts getting us there. Um, one thing that's missing is, you know, we have the attack, the instant attack, but we want a, a decay. We want that sound to get darker. So with the the envelope, with the amp mod turned on, we'll do it with the volume, but we'll also want it to do with the brightness. So a quick way to do that is to turn this filter amount, and that routes the envelope to the filter and does it automatically for you. We'll want like a, a long decay. An electric piano, you know, it takes quite a while of, after that initial attack for that brightness and volume to kind of fade down. One 
one thing we'll want to do is uh, a lot of electric pianos, especially Wurlitzers in the roads, will have like a, a tremolo effect. And since we can't modulate the um, the amp, the volume with uh, the LFO, it's not an option on here. The closest we can do is to modulate maybe the cutoff. That gives us a basic sort of square wave Wurlitzer style um, electric piano. Uh, but maybe you're already hearing a couple problems. First of all, with an electric piano, because the, um, like an acoustic piano, when you let go of the keys, like a damper will kick in and cut off the note. But here, the decay and the release are one control, so we can't control it separately. So either we can just turn off the amp mod and rely entirely on the, the brightness decay to create the illusion of the sound decaying, or we have that on and have this long release and pretend that it's reverb or something, I don't know. Um, so that's the first compromise with the, the Micro Freak. I don't understand why they did that. And the next problem you're probably hearing is when you press a note again, because it's just paraphonic and not true polyphonic, there's only one filter for all the notes. And so when you press a new note, it's re-triggering the filter and it sounds like um, you're re-triggering the notes, which is not ideal. So the compromise there is either you change your playing style such that you don't play a new note while holding down old notes, or the alternative is to use an oscillator type where you can decay the brightness with a oscillator uh, parameter instead of depending on the filter to do it. So for instance, you can hold down the, um, the matrix button to set the values back to zero. So let's go into the FM and you can hear um, with the amount at zero, it's a really dull sound. But as you increase it, it gets brighter. So all we have to do is patch that envelope to that control. And we have a very basic FM style piano. And so one thing we might want to do here is uh, instead of patching the envelope straight to the timbre, we might want to set the assign to that destination and then use the velocity to modulate that. So that way when we press harder, what happens is more envelope modulates the timbre. And you can hear we don't have the re-triggering problem by doing it through this technique. Um, so once again, we might use the LFO on the, the brightness control to get like a little tremolo. Maybe that's too much. Um, and maybe you don't want such a belly sound. Uh, we can maybe change the ratio and get like a different kind of piano sound out of this. Anyway, so that's the that's um, the basic principle to do like a polyphonic piano sound on the Micro Freak. And this actually works on a bunch of the different oscillator types. Let's just go through them very quickly. Um, Wavetable, that's, you know, that'll take forever. But uh, the Harmo, you can go from bright to dark on that one. Uh, and the chorus gets out really, really cool, so you could do like a chorusy electric piano on the Harmo. Um, virtual analog, you can go from on the, if you have the shape to zero, then you've only got this oscillator going on. So then you can go from a saw down to a triangle. 
Um, so that that could that could be interesting. Um, let's see, wave shaper. So yeah, I mean, go through these and uh, you can find other other piano sounds. All right, so go crazy and experiment. Um, there's no wrong way to make a synth patch. If you uh, found that insightful or helpful in any way, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any requests for tutorials or, or any sort of video you want me to, to make, uh, feel free to leave it in the comments. If you have any comments, leave them in the comments. Uh, if you have any requests for synth patches you'd like me to include in any of my patch banks, leave it in the comments. Until next time,